Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of the Feral Life Podcast. Today we're going to be chatting to none other than Jonas Draws. You may have seen Jonas's art around. It is uh, the biggest thing in the surfing art world at the moment. So I'm pretty excited to be speaking to Jonas. He's going to be joining us all the way down in Australia. Bear with him. It's very early in the morning there, pretty late in the evening here, but I'm sure it's going to be a great conversation anyway. So here we go. Welcome Jonas to the show. It's awesome to have you, man. No problem. It's fun to chat. Look, dude, you've got to understand how many fans you have here in South Africa. Everybody has been talking about um, the fact that we're going to be having a chat with you. So I just want you to know from South Africa, you've got a huge fan base. We're super excited to have you on the show. Thanks very much for taking time out to yeah. have a chat to us. Love to hear that. So Jonas, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Originally from Sweden, I understand, but you're now in Australia, am I correct? Yeah, I grew up in uh, suburbs in Stockholm. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I yeah, we went to school there, had my first jobs there with my parents and brother and sister, and then um, moved out here 2002 to the Gold Coast. And the reason, the reason I moved was probably like, you know, I wanted, well, part of the big reason was what I wanted to surf. So before that, I've been, after high school, we've been, when I sort of discovered surfing when I was like 15, because there's not really, I mean, there's a really cool surf scene in Sweden, but it's growing up there, like, it wasn't something I was thinking about. So I discovered, because I went on an English course trip to one of the Channel Islands of England called Guernsey. Yes, I know. And you could do, yeah, after, after class, you could sign up to like surf lessons. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and then it was like um, this classic surf dude who came with a defender full of surfboards that pick you up. And then I was just kind of just thought everything about it was so cool, you know, like, yeah. I don't know, you know, when you just love something straight away. Mm. So that's kind of yep. how the interest started. And then we started to surf in Sweden, where it's like really sort of short period crappy wind swells mostly so you essentially go surfing when it's like onshore and bad that's like yay it surfs let's go but, but but i shouldn't talk it down too much because it's like there's actually there's actually really good waves too and there's like a really cool kind of course in there now that sort of have discovered a lot of spots and if you're like really on the on it like you know you can get like a couple of hours of sort of bliss yeah yeah it's like one guy that's like just came up with a movie that's sort of been hunting sort of slabs there actually and so really the original love for surfing was sort of the hook was your love of surfing in guernsey of all places in the world that's where i um kind of started yeah i think and then um so after high school we started to take bigger bigger trips go down portugal and spain and france and stuff like that and then when it was time to sort of I don't know, my friend that I did all the trips with, he, uh, his parents said that he has to go to university and they found a university in Australia where he can surf. So he's like, okay. <laughs> and then I thought that sounded great. So I'll, uh, I joined him. So that's kind of how you ended up in Australia, right? Yeah, I started there and, uh, on the Gold Coast, which is, you know, the waves are really good. Yeah, yeah. For the most part of the year. So, and then, uh, but now I'm, since a couple of years, I'm in, uh, in a place called Freshwater in Northern Beaches, just north of Manly, yeah. which is a really cool spot too. It's more of a, I guess, really local sort of nice village atmosphere. There's like the bar and the, you know, a couple of cafes and a really cool surf store called Keel Surf. Cool. And then um, you can walk to the surf and everything. So it's, it's really lo local and nice. That's very cool, man. I mean, it sounds like a super laid back, chilled lifestyle. But I'd like to find out a little bit more about the boards you ride. Um, do you ride logs, 20s? Yeah, you know, what's your surf craft? I mean, I ride a long board. I have a 9.6 and a couple of mid lengths. And I mean, I pretty much don't ride short boards. I mean, I think, <laughs> not that you have to talk about the reason, <laughs> okay. but I... Look, dude, you're welcome to talk about your reasons for not riding short boards. I mean, that's up to you. I always had a lot of, a lot of fun with, with big boards. You know, when you, if you go on a sort of like a... I don't know, a good example would be if you're in Waikiki and it's like, oh, you can rent like a really big, weird board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always had super fun when I did stuff like that. I was like, oh man, this is so fun. 
So then I think I just, you know, started sort of bigger and bigger boards, really. Yeah, it's quite funny, actually. I was also one of those kids who grew up in the sort of the 90s era of surfing and we had thrusters like performance boards and that's what we had to learn to surf on which was probably one of the most difficult boards to to learn to ride but now i mean it's so cool to have 20s and logs and actually much more sort of easier craft to be able to to learn to surf so and way more fun you know whilst going through that process yeah, I mean, I think the fun element to surfing definitely translates into your art. I mean, your characters are playful, positive, you know, very emotive. And, um, you know, I've always said uh, surfing is about having fun and coming back with a smile on your dial. And I definitely think that's that's what your art does to us. It just puts a smile on our face. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the, the board you have the most fun on is the board you should pick, I guess. But I mean, I really, you know, I mean, I don't really surf big waves, but if it gets a little bit bigger and stuff, like, I, I mean, I enjoy getting on a smaller board for sure. Yeah. The, m m around here, it's a lot of times, like when it gets sort of bigger and good, it's like extremely crowded. So then I can't, and I'm kind of like really seeking out the sort of more uh, clean, clean, smaller days. And then you almost need more foam. So, I mean, the Northern Beaches is a really cool, um, stretch of coast just north of Sydney where it's probably I mean I don't know how many other must must be like maybe 10 to 15 little beaches with headlands in between and uh, so it's mostly beach breaks but there's also a couple of sort of reefy point breaks and there are a couple of reefs on those headlands and you know some are really good some are like really average so you can you can a lot of times you can sort of go and get away from the crowd and Mm. surf a way that's not so good but it's like you know nice clean on a sunny day so it's you get you get what you want out of it if you if you want to get sort of longer i guess east coast australia point breaks that you know the east coast is famous for you have to sort of drive drive north or south quite a bit yeah but, but if you take the car and drive like you know yeah two to five hours it's north or south it's just yeah the, cool man so it sounds like you've ended up in the perfect place you've got good waves chilled out neighborhood good vibes all around surf shop just down the road from you that's epic man i really love love where i live for sure so Jonas, do you mind if we chat about the characters uh, in your art i mean the moose is like synonymous throughout your art and having spent some time in scandinavia myself it, it resonates with me it's a beautiful creature and everyone knows you well for the moose he's everywhere but you've got other characters you've got a beaver a badger a sloth some giraffes even some zebras i mean those are more african uh, animals but they're all cool tell us about them i mean i think a lot of it um i started drawing animals i worked for uh or worked with a swedish surf brand it's called nord which means north mm. yep i don't know maybe like 20 years ago and they won, then I sort of started to draw a bear that with a surfboard. Okay. And I kind of really enjoyed it. And it's like, oh, this is really cool. That you, like how, how you can sort of, I don't know, draw animals. I'm not saying this is a unique thing, but doing animal, but doing like human things and sort of like, you don't really have to care about what they actually look like. Yeah. And then, so I guess, I guess stuck with that because I enjoyed it. And then the moose, I think, I think I kind of started doing it because when I started doing more landscapey stuff with um, watercolors for a couple of years ago, you wanted, I wanted to do like a big landscape, you know, where like the sky and the ocean was the main part and then like, you know, little silhouette surfer. And then mm. the moose is kind of perfect because it's like you can draw the horns. <laughs> it's not called yes, horns. you are right. They are called horns. horns. <laughs> um, you can do the horns, you know, and make this tiny little thing and it's still like, okay, you can see it's moose, but if you would do that with a, oh, I'm going to, whatever, that's a cat or it's like hard, it just looks like a little blob or whatever, it could be whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I, uh, when I was working on this uh, clothing project that I'm doing in, in Japan, it was kind of like, oh, you need, you know, you need a logo. And it's like, I always it's like kind of like made up little logos for different projects as random stuff. Mm. But then I sort of like picked that, you know, the moose head sort of thing for the logo. And I think since then I kind of stuck in now, I really like that character. 
Well, I think the, the moose embodies who you are. I mean, it's quintessentially Swedish. And um, it's a, yeah, for, for people from an exotic location or sort of equatorial, it's quite a mystical creature, which, which is what makes it cool, which is what makes your art cool. Yeah. And I mean, where, where I grew up that you saw, so our house was kind of five minutes walk from this massive forest where I yeah. grew up doing a bunch of different sports, like I did orienteering and mountain biking and cross country skiing in winter and all this stuff. And you saw a lot of moose, you know, like really close. Yeah. Like not every week, but you know, yeah. probably every month you saw a moose. So it's like something, feels like home a little bit. Look, I think the, the moose, we've just touched on it, but the moose for us, especially here in Africa, is like a, a mythical creature. I mean, we've got lions and elephants and I nearly said tigers, but we don't have them. But yeah, so for us down here in South Africa, that moose is, well, it's such a symbol and uh, we love it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, some, sometimes I, I feel like I'm, oh, I wonder if I should just, you know, I don't know. Not that it matters what other if people are over it or not, because I enjoy doing it, but it's like, oh, it's like, is there something wrong with me? I just keep drawing this moose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, am I incapable of doing something else? So you, I mean, you big on the surfing art scene globally, but, you know, I wanted to know, do you have any mentors, any influences that, that have kind of like pushed you in this direction? Not sort of growing up, I think, because I wasn't even kind of aware of surfing or surf art scene really but hmm. uh, I mean off the top of my head I mean there's a bunch obviously like you can't say like oh, I'm not inspired by anyone because it's like I think I'm inspired by things I see all the time yeah it's not really anything I get in general I get more inspired by photographers mm -hmm. and kind of artists outside of I guess the surf world but there's, there's, a, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Like uh, I, I'm good friends with, um, I've been to the, this art show in Japan a couple of times called Green Room, where I they invite a bunch of fun people there. And I mean, I'm kind of inspired by all those guys. It's like, you know, it's really cool to meet people that, you know, are obsessed with things like I'm obsessed with drawing moose, but just like, you know, it's their thing. And, you know, it's like, you know, they, they, they all inspire me, but I, don't, I wouldn't say I have someone particular, like, that's like the guy. Okay, that's interesting. But, uh, you know, you just go down the beach and you might see like, oh, wow, that's really cool how the clouds lighting up and you might see someone, some funky dude on a bicycle, you know, with big beard flowing in the wind or whatever, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you draw inspiration from everyday life things um it definitely translates into your art i can say that and uh, we can see how you are influenced just by sort of common things around you we have to know this but what, what's your favorite medium to work with i know you do a lot with watercolors and they're absolutely beautiful but maybe give us some insight into that it actually started with i um i didn't do much watercolor at all but when i uh, when i was back home visiting my parents my mom took me to a a, there's a really Swedish, a really Swedish, really famous Swedish. Um, he's probably really Swedish as well, actually. <laughs> what I was going to say is he's really famous Swedish. <laughs> yeah. He probably is Swedish, given that he is from Sweden. <laughs> he's really famous Swedish, very Swedish artist. <laughs> but he, um, his name is Lars Lerin. He's kind of like a very well known in watercolor scene. And he does like really cool you know, big landscapes on massive pieces of paper. So mm. she took me there and that, that, I think that was like, sort mm. of like, oh, wow, I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. And then I sort of started fiddling around with it. And then it's like, there's something super enjoyable with it because it's, it's actually quite quick, you know, because it's like, mm. Mm. and you can't go back. So it's like, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And if it came out yep. good, it's like, oh, wow. That was like, you know, from start to finish in maybe like two hours or something. And then you're like done, whereas like if you sit with like uh, ink pens and, you know, it could be like something you work on for weeks. Uh, I have to agree with you there. So it's not the same. I don't know. It's really nice to finish something really quickly. And it's like, oh, wow, that came out or it didn't. And then I guess you move on. Yeah. Plus, I think with watercolor, something that's almost the coolest part. It's like, I don't know if this is just happens. I think it happens to really good watercolor people too. Like, you know, the 
masters, but so I mean the colors sort of do its thing, you know, when you mix them on the paper. And then when it dries, you know, because it's you know it's paper, it's water, and it's like pigment and it's like mixes, it creates things that you couldn't have dreamed up. <laughs> yeah. By itself, kind of. Like, I mean, you can like, oh, I think this is gonna happen, but like sometimes it mixes like in a particular way. There's like, whoa, that's like yeah. so cool. And it's like I made it, but it's like I didn't really. It was just like <laughs> how I mean, that's that's the beauty of watercolor and uh, that unpredictability. I've watched you paint, and there's only a certain amount of manipulation you can do with your brush strokes. Yeah. Um, and then the art kind of, well, the, the paint takes on a life of its own. It's like those uh, northern lights behind you, uh, the, the Aureolus Borealis. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but it's uncontrolled art. It's And that's exactly what watercolor is. It kind of takes on a life of its own. Yeah, it's, I mean, thank you. I mean, I mean, it's uh, it's really enjoyable too when you if when you do it and you don't have like a brief from someone like you know it's just you just do it for fun really because then you can sort of yeah just start with mixing paint like you know let it the paints do its thing without sort of have planned what the rest is going to be mm. which is really cool because then you're not restricted it's like oh I wish that was like down instead of you just like well then I do this and if that happens I do this. Which is a you know nice way to get into the flow of it, I think. So if the surf's not good, and let's face it, when the surf's good, we're all surfing. But if it's not good, um, how how many hours per day do you spend on your art? Would you say? Mm, I mean, it's a mix of. I mean, because it's like a, you know, I guess my business and my art. It's like it's very. Let's say fifty-fifty of like you know, everyday stuff that everyone does like email and all that stuff. And so I mean, I've probably spend a full, I think if I'm in the painting mode, I probably spend maybe five hours painting. Okay. That's interesting. Maybe. I mean, maybe more sometimes, but some days I try to paint or work on something sort of to draw every day. Sure. And sometimes it's tricky because you're like, I don't know, caught up with a bunch of other work stuff, you know? But um, that's that's my sort of goal to do a little bit every day because I feel like it's a good way of sort of moving forward. And you're like, if you, I mean, take a year and you're like, oh, drew something every day. It's like surely going to have gotten somewhere in a year. I mean, you've got an impressive client portfolio. You've worked with some big names out there. Patagonia stands out for me. Reef, H&M. I mean super cool brands to work with which of those stands out for you the most that you've enjoyed working with the most i mean i think um i think the coolest sort of brand is kind of patagonia that i work with because it's like it's like a brand you know when i grew up it's really into sort of skiing and like outdoor stuff yep. through my parents and my brother and patagonia was kind of like you know the patagonia what do you call it catalog it's kind of like, wow, yeah. it's like, you know, because they're cool images. And so to actually work with them on, on that, on the sort of freelance basis, it's really, it's really cool or it's really cool. So that's probably sort of, yeah, I think that was, I mean, that felt like an achievement for sure. Look, the Patagonia story is an amazing one where they've come from and, you know, the whole ethos and everything to do with sort of how they, you know, how they're pushing their product into the market. Yeah. And I mean, I, I like how they, you know, they're obviously a commercial brand. And if you're commercial, you have to sort of make an impact. But I feel like they're doing a good job in sort of minimizing it and using marketing money to, you know, do the right thing. So yeah. if you can do business, I think they're doing it in a good way for sure. You have quite a connection with Japan. I mean, how did that happen? How did that come to be? My first introduction was I got invited to the Green Room Festival, mm -hmm. which is every year in a place called Yokohama, which is just outside of Tokyo on the, on the water. And uh, wait, was that at first? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, so then I did, I went there and yeah, it's a really, I mean, I really love Japan. I love like pretty much everything about it. It's such a cool culture and the food and I don't know. Yeah, I, I love going there. And um, so I got involved that way. And then um, I met a, uh, 
with the clothing and stuff I do there, I do like a project that's like kind of license based through a licensee business partner. Okay. His name is Shinji and he's, um, he lives in, uh, he's a Japanese guy who lives in Huntington Beach. And uh, he, um, I randomly met him at a meeting in, uh, when I was over in the US. He's an older guy, he's like 70. And he used to bring over uh, surf brands from California to Japan in the sort of surfing boom in the 80s. So he brought over a bunch of stuff then. And so he had a lot of experience in that. And then he, his life took it this whole other direction, did a bunch of other stuff, became a chiropractor and I don't know, just did a bunch of other stuff. But then he, um, yeah, he's kind of helping me doing that. So he's hooked up with all this, you know, manufacturer and distributors and stuff over there. So I work closely with them, which has been really, you know, really super fun to like see you. I don't know. Let's see that culture. I definitely think there's a correlation with your characters and the playfulness and sort of your your graphic style that resonates with the Japanese people. Yeah, I know. I, I, I kind of realized that after a while, I think. I didn't really... Yeah, I don't think I, I got that straight away. But I, I think you're right, for sure. Tell me, are all your... Family still in Sweden, or have you got some of them in Australia with you? Um, that mom and dad and my sister lives in Stockholm, so close to where I grew up. My dad, uh, brother lives in uh, Paris. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, he lived all over Europe, but uh, about to move to the to the to the mountains instead, which I really want him to do. So let's chat about the feral artboard that you've very kindly designed for us. We are super stoked to have you on board as one of the collaborative artists. Um, classic Jonas design. When Ant and I un sort of opened the file and, and saw what we did, we were just like, this is epic. This is classic Jonas design style. We love it, man. Yeah. I think we define it because it looks like he builds really beautiful boards. I can imagine it, you know, the colors would pop real nice. And the color, is that like a salmon pink? It's, it's, it's not a purple, it's not a red, it's kind of somewhere in between. Yeah, I guess almost, yeah. I mean, I think, I think the colors looked a little bit because that was like a screen resolution size I sent through. I think the yeah. colors of the real file are going to be a bit more poppy. So just to explain what the Feral Life artboard series is, is that we have collaborated with designers and artists around the world who will create a once-off design artboard. That artboard will then be auctioned and the a portion of the proceeds will be given to Life and Mateus, two guys that work for us who live below the bread line. And it's just going to help them. We've all been through a tough time the past few months. So it's a cool initiative to have going. It's even cooler to have uh, big artists like Jonas Clausen or Jonas Draws on board. So what we're going to be doing is we're also going to be taking some video footage of the process, putting this out on our social media platforms, and uh, if you enjoy Jonas Straw's art, please give him a follow on his Instagram page and make sure that you follow the whole process. It's going to be happening in early 2021. This is also going to be an opportunity for you to own this once-off piece of art by Jonas Straws. Uh, you can bid on the board and if you're the lucky winner, this board can be yours. So please Keep an eye out and get involved. <laughs> and it's up to you what you do with that board if you win it. You can either stick it up on your wall, you can surf it. It's totally up to you. I know what I would do with that board. I'd stick it up on my wall. I wouldn't surf it. Uh, what would you do with it, Jonas? I'd probably be curious to surf that shape too, though, because it looks like a nice, looks like a nice board. Yeah, well, you've had a bit of input as to the shape of the board. It's a mid-length. Uh, you surf retro craft yourself, 20s, mid-lengths, so you've had some input in terms of the design, not only the design, but also the shape of the board. You've been chatting to Anton about it, which is really cool. Cool, yeah. Now it looks, it's going to be good, I think. Jonas Clausen, Jonas Draws, we just want to say a huge thanks for buying out some time. Uh, having a couple of coffees with us. Have an awesome day. Uh, it's been great chatting to you. And yeah, if you don't already follow Jonas, I don't know what rock you've been living under, but please go and do that. We're going to put all the links down below. Follow him, tag him, love him. Jonas, thanks so much. It's been great talking to you, dude. Ooh, sounds good. Cheers. Bye.